Hello, I'm Dr. Mikey Mewborn, and this is Systematic Theology One. Today we're looking at the topic, Postmodernism and Theology. The idea of postmodernism is very difficult to understand sometimes, because how do you nail down the idea that there are no absolutes? What does that mean? If there are no absolutes, then how do you even define anything? And so we're going to focus in a little bit more on those on that idea, but also we're going to look at pre-modernism as well as modernism. So this is going to be a great lesson. One of the things we'll do toward the end of the lesson is focus in on how do we share the gospel with people during a postmodern or in a postmodern age. And so that's going to be very important for us because it's going to have a lot to do with how do we relate to other people? How do we share our story or share um, our testimony with people? And so focus in on that part especially. All right, well, we'll see you on the other side. Hello and welcome to Systematic Theology One. Today we're looking at postmodernism and theology. It's good to be with you. Let's go ahead and jump into our study. As we jump into this topic, I want us to begin by looking at Scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15 read this way Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. I want to show you a picture of a boat being tossed by the wind and the waves and, and actually maybe going a certain direction, but if it's bad enough and if the uh, if it's hurricane type winds or if it's just a it's a massive wind storm in general um, it will blow a boat it could possibly rip a boat apart it could push a boat against the rocks it could cause all kinds of problems and taking the people places they don't even want to go and that's what the writer of Ephesians the Apostle Paul is saying be careful don't be like infants who will believe anything who have um, this idea that if something is told to them that they will just believe it. Instead, be reasonable, be understanding, weigh everything with the scripture, make sure that you align everything with scripture. And so that's important to do when we're thinking about postmodernism, of course. So as we jump into the study, my hope is to see that, for us to see that we must not be thrown around by the wind and the waves in this idea of life. But we must be secure in what we know and what we believe, uh, grounded on the scriptures. So let's start with that, and then we'll go into understanding the terms. Now, as we jump into understanding the terms, the first term I want to talk about is the idea of pre-modernism. We can see this from Thomas Aquinas in the, his teaching. It's belief in the rationality of the universe. So it means that there's more to reality than nature. In other words... This is taking on the idea that there must be something extra natural or supernatural. And so it leaves that completely open to say there's more to reality, more to, uh, to this life than what we just see and what's natural. And so it's understanding that. That's pre-modernism. The next um, phrase that we're going to look at is modernism. Removes the idea of the supernatural so it completely takes it out this is when you see the idea of the theory of evolution ideologies in that philosophies in that and taking away then the supernatural elements of God being um, involved in human lives and so that's a push toward modernism the meaning and pattern of history is natural and only natural all the time and then the next key term is postmodernism teaches that absolutes do not exist. In other words, truth is relative. On this slide, we see a little bit more of the understanding of pre-modern, modern, modern, and post-modern with some arrows here. The human understands that there is God, and that's what you see in the pre-modern mindset. 
In the modern mindset set, you see humans understanding humans. It's more of the natural. God is not involved in this type of thinking. And then, then in the postmodern, it's the idea of the human and deconstructing what that actually means. That there, there might be ideas of relativism, there might be subjectivism, there might be these ideas that we don't even exist. This is a... Um, it's not true reality. And so it just might be our reality, but maybe that's not another person's. And so you you start to question everything in the idea of postmodern of the postmodern world. And so this is a good drawing to understand a little bit more of the terms that we'll be talking about throughout uh, throughout this lesson. Now as we go through, uh, I mentioned this slide before and mentioned this these characteristics of modernism. It's a challenge of traditional Christianity which came from scholars who adopted a critical and historical approach to studying and interpreting the Bible, treat the books of the Bible, especially the first five, the Pentateuch, not as simple documents written by a single author, but as complex texts constructed by multiple authors from several older sources. It caused doubt within the historical accuracy of the biblical text, and it questioned biblical authority. And if you remember, this cartoon that was drawn is very helpful in understanding modernity. It starts out with a Christian on the top, then begins to question things about the Bible. Bible is not infallible. Man not made in God's image. No miracles then. Then if you, there's no miracles, there's no virgin birth. And if there's no virgin birth, there really is not a deity in Christ. There's no atonement then, no resurrection. Before you know it, you're in agnosticism. And the next and the final step is atheism. This is the descent of the modernists. And so we've looked at this slide before, but I think it's helpful when you're under understanding postmodernism. So postmodernism is kind of a, a response to all of this understanding, okay? So what is postmodernism? Postmodernism is a term that encompasses a wide range of developments in philosophy, film, architecture, art, literature, and culture. So there's, there's a lot more to it. When you, If you were to ever look up postmodernism, if you were to Google it or something like that, you're going to find different artwork, you're going to find literature, you're going to find philosophy, you'll find all types of things. Uh, and that's what this slide is telling us. Originally, a reaction to modernism referring to the lack of artistic, intellectual, or cultural thought or organized principle. Started around the 1940s, exact date is unknown, peaked around the 1960s and 70s. Sometimes people say that we are post postmodernism. Uh, we're past that point, but it's definitely still around that there are no absolutes and things like that. I want to show you this neat drawing. Uh, reality can be so complex that equally valid observations from differing perspectives can appear to be contradictory. And you see this, the person on the, on the left says, there's four of these boards, maybe you would say. And then the person on the right says, no, there's three. And look at the perspective. Sometimes we call this perspectivism, or it's relative based on uh, the way that you, you come up or you, you, the way that you're looking at something, a perspective. One person can see it one way, another per person can see it another way. Uh, it's like seeing a car accident or it's like seeing something happen, you're a witness of something, and one witness says this, but you say this, you saw this. And sometimes it does depend on perspective. How do things look to people? It could look very differently. And so this is helpful when you're trying to understand postmodernism. Also, uh, we look at this slide, modernism versus postmodernism, and the modernist on the left says, I am a genius. This is a painter painted something, and, and look what he has. And then uh, the guy on the right says, the category of genius is a theoretically unten untenable cultural construct. I am a genius. So this is his thinking about it. And so the person on the left might have created something that's um, incredible, it's brilliant. But the guy on the right says, my thinking about this and what I've been able to explain is even more incredible. He's a genius as well. And so who's a genius? Well, the guy on the right says, well, uh, I am. Anybody can be. You know, it doesn't matter. So that's important. Now, the postmodernist claims this that there is no objective truth, that there is only interpretation, and that it all depends on who is in power. According to the postmodernists, we are so biased by our race, class, and gender that knowledge is impossible. The postmodernists 
allow freedom of speech only for those who share their leftist political views on issues like feminism, affirmative action, and free enterprise versus socialism. They hire and fire on the basis of ideology rather than scholarship, and they try to prevent speakers of whose views they don't approve from appearing on campus. This is written by Joe Willingham. It's an interesting, I found this uh, this comment and I thought, uh, this would be worth putting into this, this topic. And so he's being very straightforward in his thinking and he's saying these people are not really postmodernists because they're forcing absolute truths of what they believe are correct so i think it's a neat quote to kind of break down in a sense because uh, of of his view of their views and their views of his view and i think that's kind of neat when you think about that all right but as we continue on uh, we think of postmodernism as all truth is relative and of course some people would say except for the statement um, and and that's the idea you can believe how you want to about these different things uh, another person has said it this way believe anything it doesn't matter we have all the right to be able to do that Another is, is the word tolerance. Tolerance has become a, uh, a buzzword for many people. You need to become more tolerant. You need to become more understanding. You need to open your mind a little bit to what's really out there. And this, um, this little uh, slide, this picture says, let's celebrate our differences in diversity, even though you are clearly wrong. And I think that that's... Um, <laughs> symbolic of a lot of things that's going on even in the world today um, I, I'm going to I'm going to put my ideas out there my ideas will be better than yours um, even though I try to accept all ideas mine are better and that should be more absolute regardless who says it and so these are some of the issues that come up in the idea of postmodernism and the ideology therein in this slide, we look at the types of postmodern theology by Millard Erickson. Um, number one, he brings up deconstructive or eliminative theology. This eliminates or deconstructs the traditional and biblical doctrines of God. So this is this type of theology within the postmodern realm. Number two is constructive or revisionary postmodern theology. Eliminates traditional views of God, but agrees that a worldview must exist. So it is rather absolute in certain areas, such as having a worldview, but it definitely wants to eliminate the very uh, traditional views of God. Liberation, postmodern theology is number three, less concerned about epistemology, more focused on the transformation of structures in society. And so it doesn't care about the knowledge as much or, or how we understand things, but more focused on transformation that society's changing and there's uh, maybe development in that mindset, structures of society. And then number four, conservative or restorative theology seeks to retain realism. It rejects most thoughts of tradition, traditional Christianity, but accepts many of the discoveries and insights found in modernism. Now, I think that's kind of interesting uh, because um, what it rejects, but what it retains. Um, when we're thinking about this, it's it's holding on to what is real or what it perceives as real, but it's rejecting Christianity, and then it focuses in on certain things that um, that people have shown to be true or they believe are true through modernism, whether it's some kind of form of art. Or those types of things or it could be something that's found in science and people are pushing those things through the modern uh, modernism type of thinking all right and so that that's important when you look at that conservative restorative theology all right um, now the question is how do you share the gospel with someone who is postmodern in their thinking or they're a postmodernist how do you share the gospel sharing the gospel in the postmodern world uh, some of the best ways to do that is inductive Bible study, okay? So maybe creating relationships, friendships, those types of things, but doing that and then using the Scripture. So inductive Bible study, you wonder what that is. One of the best ways to say the Bible 
is through this inductive study. It, this method makes observations on a passage of scripture and then it draws conclusions based on those observations. Um, and so it's taking what's already there and it's um, it, it's taking those observations and, and what you do is you kind of develop your thinking based on those. So that's what inductive Bible study is all about. And inductive gospel presentations what that means is that you let somebody see the scripture for itself and then they come to the conclusion on their own. So for instance, you begin to explain to them, or not explain, but share the share the uh, scriptures with them that speak of who God is and what he's done. Maybe it's the Romans road, and then they will understand the gospel on their own. Um, and then that'll make more sense to them. So inductive Bible study, inductive gospel presentations are very helpful. Share truthfully. Share the truth is what you should do and share truthfully. Share honestly. Be honest with people about your beliefs and then share consistently. Be consistent in what you say and how you say it and the way that you live. Don't cater to them necessarily and don't take on their maybe their characteristics or uh, their ideas just to try to be... Um, to have a better relationship with them and said, stay true to who you are. That has been one of the most helpful things when sharing in a postmodern generation. And then, um, as, as we look at this idea of evangelism, you know, question marks everywhere. It seems like, how do we do this? How do we do this? I think that there's some ways that are helpful that, uh, you can find. And I found on this, uh, this blog site, and I think it's kind of neat. Empiricism is the first thing that's mentioned here. When we share with them, the postmodernists, our feelings about Jesus and how we sense his activity in our day-to-day -day lives, they can relate. What can they relate to? Our feelings. How does it make us feel that we are interacting with the creator of the universe? Now, they may not believe in the creator of the universe, but they do understand feelings. And so it's important to say this, this by doing this, it makes me feel this way. Okay, uh, a good friend of mine told me a long time ago, working out is one of the greatest things for you. It's good for your body and it's good for your soul and your mind. It's good for all those things. He said, because it makes you feel better about yourself. You can't go wrong really working out. Okay, and that was his thinking. And what people can relate to in that is it makes you feel better. So they might start working out with you because of the feeling that you get from it. And so that's an idea uh, that's helpful when sharing the gospel with somebody. They may not understand or relate with you in understanding who God is, but they'll relate with you with the feeling aspect of it. The relationship side of it. They are extremely important to postmoderns. The truism, Christianity is about a relationship, not a religion, will resonate sweetly and immediately with the postmodern or with, with postmodern thinkers. And then narrative is where meaning rests with postmoderns. It's all about the story. This again fits neatly into the way God has revealed himself to us. In fact, we can only really understand truths about God by the way he has interacted with us in his story. And so feelings, relationships, narrative, these types of things are very helpful helpful when sharing our faith with people that are postmodern thinkers. And I think this is helpful when we look at in, the, in this world. Um, I want to take a cue from Paul at the Areopagus, and this is what he said in Acts 17. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I pass along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. So if you think about it, God gives everything. He gives feeling. He gives relationships. He gives the true understanding of narratives. He gives uh, uh, the understanding of all things true and, and living. And I love what Paul does here. He meets the people where they are. He's, he's talking to them about something they say can't really be known. Because what a postmodern thinker would say is truth 
cannot really be known. There are no absolutes or truth is relative. So therefore anybody can be truth. Uh, anybody can have truth in their own thinking or, or create their own truth. Or maybe it's perspectivism, or maybe it's relativism. And what Paul is saying is the very things that you're claiming can't really be known to all people can be known. And his name is Jesus Christ. And um, and so this is what this is how Paul reaches to the reaches those people. All right. Well, this has been Systematic Theology One: Postmodernism and Theology. Uh, it's good to be with you today. God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right, it's been so good to be with you today. I hope you've enjoyed this topic, postmodernism and theology. I know that some of these concepts are difficult to understand because they're they're not normal in our conversation. But if you can hone in and get a hold of these ide ideologies and philosophies, it'll really help you in the future to nail down what people believe as well as how to share your faith with them. So it's good to be with you today. Continue on in your studies and we'll see you very soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.